Hello, this is Jordan Hordyke for Computer Science 390, independent study for programming Crestron equipment. This is the first video of, I'm assuming many, to be recorded during the coronavirus lockdown. So this means that I do not have much equipment. Uh, we have no more access to the workshop, and Mason will be more integrated in these videos. So as far as my technology, I have the processor, and I can run virtual touch panels, and that's about it. I can't run any programs. I can't record any videos to show you stuff working. So on my end, I'm going to be more code-based or tutorial-based. I won't be showing that things are working. That'll be more Mason. So now that that's out of the way, today I'll be tackling the projector control over RS-232. So we're going to open ourselves up a window, a new project. Oops, that's Chrome. I apologize. So this project is going to be utilizing the RMC and the, the RS-232 two-way driver. So first we have to create a new program. Let me toss in all of those bits really quick. So here I've input all of the system name, the program tag, and the comment. The comment you do not need. Hold on a second. The comment you do not need to have verbatim, or the system name you can name it whatever you want. But that's just what I put in. So this will automatically load in the RMC, as you probably already know. But here we're going to hop on down to the slot four RMC COM one. That is our. That will contain our two-way serial driver, and that's what we're going to use to connect to the processor. And I believe, let me double check, yes, that's all we're going to need right now. Wait, I apologize. In the slot two, we need to add our processor, or sorry, our touch panel. So there, that's all we need. So we're going to hop back over to the program view. And under logic, we're going to insert ourselves a subsystem. Never mind. We don't need a subsystem. So we're just going to delete that. Inside of our control modules, we're going to hop over to the touch panel. And we're also going to open up a serial driver. These two are going to be key for what we're going to need, for what we're going to use. So on the touch panel, we need to give ourselves space. These press one through five, for some reason, they are mapped to these power home lights up and down buttons, unless these are assigned. Well, actually, even if they are assigned. So I'm not sure if you've run into that before, but we have run into this issue. So we're just, from now on, one through five, we're not gonna be using, aside from the exact same as power up and down. So power maps to one, home maps to two, and so on. So we're always going to start with the six. Otherwise, we're going to have mismatching inputs. So starting with number six, we want to say power. Oh, I'm going to say power on press, and then seven is going to be power off press, and then just to give ourselves a little bit of space. We are we're going to hop down to press nine and say source VGA one set or press and then source VGA two press source HDMI press and source S video press. So these are going to be the four different video options we have. Currently, uh, Mason and I are using a Epson PowerLite 1915. That is the model number of the projector we're using, and these are the video sources that that projector has available to us. So we're going to now copy all these. Actually, we're going to start with the power on and off press. We're going to add them. 
Now we also want to add all of these four, but we can't add these four because there's no spots for them. So we're going to Alt Shift Plus, and we're going to add four more because we need four more button, four more inputs. We're going to click OK, select all of these again, and drag them on over. So now each of these has its own its own text associated with it. So whenever we press the power on, we're going to send the corresponding text. So we want to send PWR space ON. This is the code that we're going to need to send to the projector in order for it to turn its power on. And then very similarly, power off for power off. And then for all of these sources, the VGA1, we want to send source one zero. I'm going to copy this really quick because everything else is going to be extremely similar to that. Then VGA2 is going to be source 20. HDMI is going to be source 30. And then S video is going to be source 40. So we're not comparing this to any strings, so we're not going to get any text output saying, okay, I have turned the power on, or I have turned the power off, or error. We're just going to leave this part empty. This is how we would compare uh, outputs from the projector to match with errors and or states. Now for the delimiter, we need to send a new line character after all of these, and after all these source signals, the power on through source 40. And that new line character is backslash x, lowercase x, zero, capital D. So that's going to be tagged on to the end of all of these whenever it gets sent. So now we just want to set these transmit and receive channels. So these are just going to be simple, simple, understandable signal names. We don't need them to be matching anything specific, at least not to my knowledge do we need that, but we at least need it to be understandable. So this is Epson Powerlight 1915, which matches the model number, and then the TX dollar sign. We want it to end with a dollar sign, but the TX will stand for transmit, and since we're sending it to the projector, this is the transmit side. I'm just going to pop this over onto the receive and then rename this the same thing but rx so the receive from the projector and that's only be you'll see that the rx does not line up with the tx here it should theoretically be matched up with the rx but that's not how we're going to be thinking of it this is our transmit to the projector and our receive from the projector and then this signal will correspond to what the projector is going to receive from us and what the projector has transmitted to us. A little complicated to follow along with, but as long as you make sure that the transmit is the transmit and receive do not line up with their corresponding lines, that will be a okay. Trust me, it's confusing. I get it. So, if I remember correctly, that's all we need to do for the program side of this. So I'm going to quick save this, control S, and in the in my file structure I'm going to quick create a new file. So I'm going to place it into this projector communication tutorial folder and I'm going to name it projector communication tutorial. Save that, and now it's saved. Now I'm going to press F12 to compile it, and I would like to transfer this project over USB to my processor. So it is going to send it really quick, and I will come back when it's done sending. So the project is done sending. So now I'm going to close this all out. Well, I'm actually just going to minimize it. I'll just pop it over onto my side monitor over here. 
so I can reference it later while I'm working on touch panel so that way I can get the I can get the sources in the right spot. So now I'm going to quick open up BT and I'll pause the recording while this loads. Now that it's all loaded up, we're going to create a new project and we're just going to hop into the tutorials. We're going to create ourselves a new folder projector projector communication tutorial and we're going to name it projector communication tutorial I know I've said projector communication tutorial a lot we're going to just choose this theme as we don't really need a a specific one you can pick whatever you'd like so now I'm going to go up here and click new page I'm going to call this index as it's the first the first page we want up and I'm going to also right click on it and say mark pages first typically when you have a one page program you don't need to do that but if you have a multi-page program you want to select one to be the first and I'm just going to keep doing that from here on out so now we need six buttons so I'm going to quick get those added for us so I've added these buttons and I did forget to do one thing in the program over here I did forget to feed all of these back into themselves as feedback so that we can get some some uh, feedback on when they're done so it looks like this isn't going to work as smoothly as I want it to but that is okay we can we can make this work okay so now we'll have the feedback in there I'm going to save and compile resend this and I'll meet you back in VT all right so we're back in VT now I've reset the program to the processor the one that will allow for feedback that we'll see that come in handy here when we go to configure all these buttons so I'm going to go through this configuration for the first one and then I will I will go do those all my on all the rest on my own later so this power on we're going to quick click this show control feedback that will allow us on press to see that the system recognizes that we're pressing it and the press digital join according to our little project over here we need power on to be joined to six so we're going to enter six here and save that and then power off will be seven VGA one will be nine VGA two will be ten HDMI will be eleven and S video will be twelve I'm going to go do those off camera and I'll be right back all right I've gone through and mapped these all out and I've set them all to show control feedback so now what we're going to do we're going to save this program we're going to press F12 to compile it it will compile and say it's ready to send but seeing as we don't have a touch panel we're going to hit cancel on the send so now what we have to do we just got to open up our handy dandy project folder and then we need to load up this dot VTZ now seeing as I've moved from locations I'm gonna quick pull up crush on toolbox just to find the IP address of my processor because I don't actually remember what it's called so or sorry its IP address I've only had it here a week or so so I don't know what it has set to so I'll be right back once I have that all right I've connected and I've got its IP address I'm going to quick enter that in 192.168.0.22 set the port to be the correct port and hit connect power on power off VGA1 VGA2 HDMI1 and S video now I know this doesn't really show much to you seeing as we can't really get a feedback so we're gonna try our best to 
show the text in a text box over here. And I'm going to quick make that myself. You don't need to do this. I'm only showing this so that you know you'll be getting the correct text. Unless I can't figure it out, which we'll find out in a second. I'll be right back. All right, so I have routed the text to show up on the touch panel. Apparently not. So after trying, turns out I can't figure this out. You'll just need to take my word for it that it'll work if you connect it to the projector properly. I know that's not the strongest way to end a tutorial, but I can't really do much without having a projector here. So thank you for watching the video, and I will hope to see you next time. Take care.